What's up YouTube? This is Isaac coming at you today. First time in a while that I've done an instructional DIY how-to kind of video. Uh, and today the topic is going to be about uh, harmonica valves. That is how to make your own valves at home simply, easily, uh, cheaply for little money uh, and effectively. Okay, so those are the key uh, things that we're going to talk about today. So first off, if you're uh, scratching your head wondering what is a harmonica valve, uh, you should do some Googling. I'm not going to talk uh, totally about what a valve is and what it does today. I'm going to show you right now uh, what they are and what they look like. So you see here these little strips of black attached to uh, this harmonica reed plate. Uh, oh, there's my cat. Thanks, cat. Hello. Well, we're going to have some we're gonna have some guest here while we talk about valves. Uh, anyway, valves uh, go on the outside of the reed plate that is opposite from the side that the reeds are attached. Uh, and essentially they uh, act, uh, they clamp down whenever you are blowing or drawing the opposite direction uh, from which that particular reed uh, usually plays. They use them in chromatics to save wind. Uh, we use them on diatonics in a slightly different configuration. Uh, that is a half valve. So you see here, this is a blow reed plate and only the uh, top four holes on this particular harp are uh, valved. Uh, and we would put uh, valves on the uh, lower uh, six holes of the draw reed plate. So that's what a half valve diatonic harmonic is. And that's the context that I'm using these particular valves in. So without further ado, uh, I'm going to reveal the mystery uh, material. Uh, you need to get your hands on some of this. Okay, this is uh, not duct tape. This is gaffer's tape. This is made of uh, cloth. Uh, not like plastic like duct tape is. Uh, it has a really nice adhesive uh, that is actually meant, unlike duct tape, which is meant to stick and never come undone, this is meant to stick and stay, but to be able to, you should be able to take it off cleanly without any residue remaining. So if you don't have any gaffer tape, which you should have if you're a musician, because you're wrapping uh, mic cables, uh, you're uh, fixing bro uh, broken Tolex on your amp, uh, you're doing all kinds of stuff with this. So if you don't already have a good roll of good quality gaffer stick, you're going to want to get your hands on some of this. You can get it on the internet. You can get it at your local hardware store if you have a good one. But don't skimp. A good roll should cost about uh, more than $10, less than $20. I think I paid 15 bucks for this particular roll. Uh, uh, there's actually a website of uh, these crazy roadies who have done uh, lots of tests on different brands of gaffer tape, and they got this objective system of rating so you can see which one is the best gaffer safe. So I bought whatever one they rated was the best. Uh, it, it literally pops up the first or second thing in Google if you Google gaffer's tape. So anyway, that's the secret material. And let me tell you uh, why I'm using gaffer's tape and not uh, some of these other things you may have heard about uh, that are used for harmonica valves uh, like micro suede or mylar or um, Teflon baking sheets and some other variety of materials like that. Um, number one, I was looking for a material that's cheap. Okay, so this is a huge roll of gaffer tape, 12 bucks or something like that. You can make enough valves out of this one roll to valve every single harmonic in the world. Okay, I, and I'm not even really stretching that much. This is going to produce a lot of valves. So it's cheap and it's plentiful, number one. It's also readily available. I had a really hard time uh, sourcing micro suede and these Teflon baking sheets and stuff uh, when I first started messing around with valves on my harmonicas and I got really frustrated trying to find the materials. So that's uh, number two. Uh, number three, uh, you can see that this thing already has a built-in adhesive, a very nice adhesive, an adhesive that is not gonna gum up your harmonica if you make a mistake. So it's very forgiving. Unlike other valve materials that have to be glued to the harmonica, which means you've got to find the right kind of glue. You can mess it up pretty badly by getting glue down in the reeds. Uh, and if you want to take them off, you got to scrape all the glue off. It's nasty, it's messy, uh, and it's difficult. This stuff has the um, adhesive built in. Uh, number four, a good property of valves is that they not stick or flutter or make uh, nasty sounds due to condensation between the valve and the reed plate. Plastic valves are notorious for that. 
This is what the micro suede valve is supposed to uh, fix in large part, also leather valves. Um, the uh, thing about this tape is that it is actually cloth tape, unlike regular duct tape or uh, other kinds of tape. This is actually real cloth tape. So it basically has the same properties as the micro suede or the ultra suede uh, valves have in that it doesn't um, get sort of suctioned down to the replate. Uh, when it gets moist, okay? So those are all the things. Uh, it's uh, cheap, it's uh, readily available, it's got its own built-in adhesive, um, uh, and it's actually a good material to make valves out of anyway. So what I'm gonna do right now is flip the camera around, show you my workspace, uh, and I'm gonna show you how I actually cut and attach these valves to uh, a real harmonica. So. I'll be right back. Okay, so I'm back. I've got this thing sort of rigged up very precariously on my mic stand. Uh, let me briefly talk, I'm going to put that aside, about some of the tools that you'll need. You could use um, uh, more tools than what I'm going to show you here, but this is the basic suite. You obviously, first of all, you need this uh, gaffer tape by good quality gaffer tape, not the cheap stuff. Um, you're going to regret it if you buy the cheap stuff. And like I said, don't use duct tape. You might be able to use uh, some other types of tape, like especially I'm thinking Micropore or something like that uh, from the medical business. But um, this is the stuff that I've found to work the best. I've experimented a little bit. I did try real duct tape. I did try electrical tape. Uh, and those things you don't want to use for this. You want to use this stuff that's got the cloth and the good adhesive, okay? Then obviously you will need a nice pair of scissors. I actually have tried every single pair of scissors that I own, and I find that these kitchen shears are the best because they're sharp. I keep them sharp. Um, they're narrow, which helps me sight down them a little bit. Um, and mainly, it's it's the fact that they're really sharp. And then the other thing, I you know, I could use this pair of scissors to do it, everything right now, but I also have this little bit of pair of scissors right here. These are sewing scissors. Um, these are actually my sewing scissors because I was borrowing my wife's so frequently. She got sick of it, so she bought me my own. These things are great for all kinds of stuff that uh, to do with harmonica, so I use these all the time. And I also use them in doing electronics to snip wires and to get into tight spots. So I like these things a lot. Um, something you might want to have uh, is just another little uh, tool. This is my uh, gapping tool that uh, was given to me by Chris McCaleck. And mainly what I like about it is this spade tip. I do all kinds of stuff with it, including actually um, the blue tack tuning so I actually happen to have a little dab of it here in my in my tray this is blue tack so I actually used this spade to sort of cut off little bits and put them on reeds I'll make another video about that uh, down the line but this can help actually uh, to get sort of get in and sort of push down valves and also I use it to uh, wrap them around so I'm going to talk about why I'd want to do that in a minute so <clears throat> without further ado let me uh, get started uh, on, I'm going to make a batch of basically valves that I'm going to use right now in front of you. So all you have to do is just take a, a length, it doesn't even matter how long, take a length of this stuff, take your scissors and just snip it, okay? So this is what I've done right here. And you sort of lay that down. Uh, it's quite sticky, so watch your hands. And then uh, you're just going to get another length, basically about the same, trying to cut it uh, as straight as possible. I'm doing this off camera so I don't gum that up. So voila, two pieces, straight as possible. And what you're going to do is you're going to overlay them like this, but not perfectly. You want them to be offset by just a little bit. And let me do it right now in front of you so that you can see how easy it is boom right there and so what we've done we've basically attached this to make a double-sided piece of cloth so this is two pieces of tape thick and then you see there's an overlap one on each side so basically we can now make a whole bunch of valves out of this one little tiny piece of the tape so what you want to do before you do anything else is just trim one end up just to get it relatively straight like that this bit gets tossed aside and then now what you want to do is cut it basically in half uh, lengthwise so parallel to this extra bit of tape that's hanging off here 
you want to basically cut it in half and uh, just eyeball it. It's not at all important right now. Um, these valves are going to be plenty long for every hole on your harmonica, so don't worry about that. So now what you can see is that I've got two strips. You know, let me lay them so that you can see. Two strips where you've got a little bit of overhang on one end and then cloth material. So that's our valve uh, setup, our basic valve setup right there. So this is the only tricky part actually in this whole deal. Uh, and that is actually cutting the valves to the right size and shape. And uh, briefly, let me show you what that size and shape should be. Actually, I'm going to do, this is the harmonica that I'm actually going to valve. This is a Delta Frost uh, uh, from Bushman. So let me just briefly disassemble this thing and I'll do it in front of you so you can see me. This is not the exciting part of the video so I'm going to do this um, very very quickly but you're getting a live real life look at the inner insides of a Delta Frost so that maybe is a bonus for you. Uh, this is actually you can see there in the key of B which is a totally weird key. Uh, I understand but I like playing in weird keys sometimes so there's the uh, the cover plates off you can actually see here I've got some blue tack on this particular reed here that's because I've actually already turned actually these two reeds right here and right here I've actually retuned this harmonica using the blue tack to what they call a Dorian layout that means that I have dropped the pitch of the three draw and of the seven draw by a semitone so that I'm actually always playing a minor third on those two notes so this is a cool pitch uh, uh, tuning system for playing jazz, I find. So anyway, that's a little bit of an aside. Let me actually take the harmonica totally apart. And luckily, this one's only got three screws, which is good. I, I don't like it when they have too many screws. I think it's generally a rule of thumb. The more screws a harmonica has on the inside, the less airtight it's going to be in general, and the less, uh, the lower the quality. So. So when I build my own harmonicas, I actually only ever use two screws, right? So let's take our harmonica apart. So this is the draw plate. You want to put that on the side here. And this is the blow plate. And it's uh, not wanting to come off. There we go. You want to put that on this side. So I always do draw on the left side, draw on the left side, and blow on the right side so I don't confuse myself. But anyway, <clears throat> so let's look at the comb. This is the, this is the thing that's going to determine the uh, width of the um, valves that we want to make because if you remember from earlier on an already valved harmonica so if I show you maybe this one you can see inside the valves have got to be inside so you can see them sort of barely in there uh, they've got to fit fully and totally inside the slot uh, the comb of the comb and if you make them too wide uh, they're going to stick in there and they're not going to do the job that you want so you have to be a little bit careful about that so I just want to show you how you can sort of get this sort of measurement uh, very simply. I don't measure stuff. You could actually totally get a ruler out and draw lines and try and cut along the lines. But I'm much more of a uh, intuitive, go by the feel kind of guy. So what I do is I kind of calibrate my brain by doing this. What I'm doing right now, I'm sort of just getting a feel. Now you don't want to make the valve as wide as... Uh, the inside of one of these chambers. You want to make it a, a bit narrower, okay? Um, if you try and make it exactly the same size, you're always, there's going to be, it's too fine, you know? What's going to happen is you're going to have it over a little bit and it's going to stick and you need yourself to have a little bit of wiggle room. So basically you're just trying to get the, the maximum size and then of course the minimum size is actually the size of the reed slot itself. So you don't want it to be narrower than the reed slot because it's just going to go inside uh, down in there and it's going to get stuck again and that's not a good thing either. So I've sort of got this size calibrated now in my brain and I'm just going to cut and the beauty of this thing is that this is so cheap and so easy you can just cut and cut and cut and you make a bunch of duds who cares throw them away just use the good ones pick out the good ones and throw away the duds okay so that's basically what I'm going to do right now I'm going to start cutting like this, and then when I get to the end, I'm going to be careful, and I'm going to see what I got. Oh, that one looks kind of narrow. That's a dud. Get rid of it. In fact, look what I've done. I've kind of curved off to the side, so I'm just going to straighten up my edge again, like that, 
and I'm going to go again, get, trying to get it a little bit wider. And it's okay if you get them a little bit wider, you can always trim them up afterwards. So let's see what I've done. That one still looks a little thin, but we'll experiment with it. We'll put it off to the side. Let's go again. So let's sight down our scissors. Let's try and keep things nice and even, nice and straight. I find that you actually have to overcompensate. You tend to sort of want to go off like this, so you want to at the last minute turn back in like that in order to get a straight uh, cut all the way down. So let's see how we did there. That's looking pretty good. It's a little wonky, a little curvy, but uh, maybe we can fix that in our next go round. So let's try and well, I'm doing this off camera. Let's try and actually make that nice, straight, and wide. I'll go even slower than I normally do. Seriously, normally what I do is just just cut. I just cut and cut and cut and cut and let them fall down wherever they are, and then. I go. I just go through afterwards and go. That's a good one. That's a bad one. That's a good one. That's a bad one. And the ones that are really picky are the ones that you're going to put on the inside, on the back of the draw replay. Actually, the ones that you put on the outside of the below replay, those actually can be as wide as you want them to be. It doesn't make too much of a difference. I mean, you don't want them giant, but they can be wide because they don't have to be inside any. Uh, comb slot, so there's no real width uh, restriction. They have to be wider than the back of the. They have to be wider than the reed slot itself, but since they're not inside the comb, it doesn't matter how wide they actually are. So let's see what I'm doing. There, well, that's a really fat wide one right there. So that one's probably too wide, and we can show you again. I mean, it is definitely narrow enough, but it's getting basically right to the edge of the size limit that I'm talking about now. See this is too wide right here. So I need to recalibrate my mind. Let's look at one of these other ones. This one looks like kind of a nice size right here. So yeah, so that one's actually probably just about the right size. There's plenty of play to sort of overlay in the slot. So I'm not going to cut any more on camera. Instead what I'm going to do, I've got, I've got some of them actually already prepared here. Instead what I'm going to do is actually show you how I attach them to the, the reed plate. So let me get this over here where it's not quite so shiny from the light. And I want to point something out on this particular replay. What you can see is, is sort of series of marks. This is because this is a harmonica I've played for a little while and so where the reed plate has sort of been up against the slots here, it's left a mark. And any harmonica you play with any kind of comb, plastic or not, eventually is going to leave these kind of marks. Uh, these are actually a really good thing for attaching our valves because they actually give us a built-in guide for where to attach the uh, valve and where not to attach the valve. Now if you've got a brand new harmonica, uh, this is going to be a little bit more tricky for you because you're going to have to try and keep it in the plate basically like this and get in in there and so you're probably going to have to go in and cut those sprues out if you've got a plastic comb. Uh, if it's a wooden comb they'll be open up. Then you would have to try and sort of put it in through the slot like this, right? Get it aligned up in there. And then you'd have to reach in with your tool and push down like that. And then you'd have to take the whole thing off. Hopefully you wouldn't pull the, the valve off with it like I just did there. Because then you got to actually have to, have to trim the valve up at the end. <clears throat> but here's the valve right here. So here's the, the, the one good one I made just in front of you. And you could attach it just like this right now and be f basically flat, and it would work pretty well. But there's a little secret thing that you want to do before you actually attach the valve, which is to curl it. So you see the side that the adhesive is sticking up? You want to curl to that. That's the side that's going to be down. So you kind of want your valve to be curling that way and definitely not curling up away because what's going to happen is if it curls up too far, when you blow, instead of clamping down, what's going to do is it's going to open up and it's going to get in the way and it's going to screw things up. So you want it always to be sort of on the way down, sort of curling down towards the replay instead of up away from it. So you see how I've got it oriented. I've got my little tool here. You could use um, any kind of small round tool. And I'm just using it to sort of wrap the, the valve around a little bit like that. I'm just sort of rolling it up just like that and then unrolling it and now you can see here how I've got a sort of slightly curved valve. 
Uh, don't worry if it looks too curved right now. It's not. This is going to flatten out over time. But you're giving it just a little bit of a head start to help it curl in the right direction. So here we go. This is how easy it is. The adhesive's already on there. You don't have to bother with any glue. You just try and get it lined up with the marks that are already on your uh, comb right here. I mean, on your on on the back of your uh, reed plate right here. And you basically want to get it so that the adhesive is basically covering the rivet, or in this case, the back of the spot weld, right? So you don't want the adhesive to get onto the reed part. So if I pull it back, you can see. I could have come down a little bit closer, but that's pretty good right there, okay? So that's one reed. It's attached. It's not going anywhere. What I'm going to do now is take my little sharp scissors, and I'm actually going to trim it to size. Now, what you want to do, you don't want to cut it long. You want to cut it actually a little bit short so that when you do it, there's just a little bit of the reed slot exposed, okay? And the reason for this, this is something that PT Gazelle advises to do. So I'm actually going to trim a little bit more off of this particular reed right there. Because that just gives it, uh, it's still the, the valve is still going to do its job, but it basically gives it a little bit of air room to come unstuck when you start drawing in this case again. So uh, you have less of a chance of this thing becoming vacuum locked to the back of your heart. So what you do, you just do this by trial and error if you're, if you're just starting out. Um, you want to fit the, the comb onto the plate every time just to make sure you didn't screw it up because um, nothing is worse than doing a whole bunch of valves, then doing a trial fit and finding out you screwed up on all of them. right? So you, you just want to make sure that you're not getting the valve stuck anywhere. It's not too wide. This is pretty tight on the left side, but it, I think it'll be okay. Uh, so I would basically just now take the next valve that I've got here. Here's one that I kind of cut a little bit weird at the tip. So I would just trim that up like that. Take the next valve, just go here like this, and attach it like that. Take my scissors again, and just trim it to size like that. Bam. So, oh, I forgot to curl that one up, <laughs> but uh, it's not going to matter too much. I can actually do it after the, after the fact by actually pinching it like this. This doesn't work quite as well as curling it. You can try and curl it a little bit like that so it's coming down. You can, you can do that even with your already curled one. And that's going to help right there. Uh, ideally, you give it a, a few curls uh, ah, before just to get the sort of shape set up. And again, I'm just going to put this thing back on like that just to make sure that I'm good. And there we go. Now, you might be wondering why I haven't cut the sprues, the, uh, these sort of bars, out of this thing. I used to do that on every plastic comb harp, uh, but actually I'm going to leave it on this one because they're going to actually help keep the valves down where they should be. Those things are going to act like natural, um, you know, like uh, restrictions for the valve coming all the way up. That's actually going to help them do their job better than, uh, than before. So that's actually a, uh, a good thing in this case. Um, and I actually don't really understand the logic behind cutting them out. Somebody said something about it changes the airflow and I just started doing it, it became a habit. So now I'm not going to do it anymore on my plastic comb harp. So I'm going to leave it in and I'm going to actually uh, use them to help uh, help it when, I, uh, when I've got them valved. So I'm going to finish up this harp. I'm going to stop the, the camera and then I'm going to come back and play something for you. All right, guys, this is just a uh, little addendum to my valve making video from before. Um, Okay, so you're probably figuring out that my little laissez-faire attitude about just make as many as you want uh, and pick them out. Um, it works, but it maybe isn't the most efficient way of doing things. So I succumbed to uh, my left brain, the rational, planned out, reasonable side of my brain. And I actually decided that why not actually measure the <laughs> distance in the uh, slot and also, why not measure um, the actual size of the uh, reed slots themselves and find a reasonable size and then measure it out on the piece of um, uh, valve material uh, 
draw nice straight lines with a ruler and cut it this way. So uh, you're, if you're wondering what size I came up with, it is an eighth of an inch, okay? So essentially two of those little bars uh, on uh, my ruler and I just used the ruler and went down uh, marking off as I went and making straight parallel lines and I find that I'm actually able to make pretty much perfect reads so look at I mean re perfect vowels every time this way okay so a little bit of analness seems to pay off also um, before you saw me uh, initiating the cut from this side and working that way I find that you can make a much straighter cut if you start actually from the uh, overlap size side the uh, side where the adhesive is still um, visible and you cut from this side to that side you can actually make a perfectly straight cut following your line which is easier than trying to eyeball it so okay my creative side loses for today and my logical organized side uh, organized side wins okay so that's it for this video uh, check out uh, the next video where I talk about uh, valve playing and techniques for, for uh, approaching valved bends and that kind of stuff catch you on the flip side